Hello IT Pros, welcome back to my IT Workshop. In this video I'm going to show you how to virtualize a physical Windows computer and take it somewhere else. So this is the scenario. I have two physical computers, two tower PCs. The first one is going to be a Dell Optiplex 7010, Intel i7, 6GB of RAM and Windows 10 Pro. Well the version doesn't really matter, can be home. And this is the computer that is going to be virtualized. So using a Microsoft tool software, we're going to make a copy, a snapshot of the uh, computer and we're going to take it somewhere else. I like to think uh, of software as the soul, as the goals of a computer. So we're going to take the soul of this computer and we're going to run it somewhere else. In this case, in this custom computer, which is an Intel i5, 8 GB of RAM and Windows 10 Pro. Custom means that I have built this computer, so it's not Dell, HP, or something else. And uh, this is important. We need Windows 10 Pro at least or higher. Okay, so Windows 10 Pro at least or Enterprise. Because um, in order to activate this feature, uh, Hyper-V, which is um, proprietary software from Microsoft to run, create, and modify virtual machines, we need Windows 10 Pro or higher. I forgot to mention the computer to virtualize is called well to virtualize and the new host the destination where we're going to run it it's called available pc well i know it's not the most creative name but it's just a name to differentiate them so what's the whole purpose of doing this the whole purpose is that the computer that we're going to virtualize is going to be running in the new host at the same time so two operating systems two windows 10 are going to run it, run it at the same time so without further ado let's let's start so here we are. I'm using RDP to connect to the available PC, which is the one we're going to configure first. So let me go to properties. As you can see, it's Windows 10 Pro. From the minimum, we need to activate Hyper-V. Uh, we can see the, some other features like the processor. It is an i5. There's the model. Uh, we have 8 gigs of RAM. Um, well, it's a, it belongs to a work group. The name, as mentioned before, is available PC. And that's what we have. Now, I, I have opened a PowerShell command prompt and I issue the command system info. And this is to prove that this computer is not a virtual machine that I, that I am running, that it's a physical, real machine. So as you can see, the name is available PC, Microsoft Windows 10 Pro, the build of the system, and in system manufacturer, it's a system manufacturer, <laughs> it says the same. And in, we're going to see in a few more minutes that for other computers, let's say a Dell, it says Dell or HP or any other brand. But since this computer has been built by me, it says system manufacturer, okay? So now I'm going to show I'm going to show you a screenshot from a vir real virtual machine. So this is a Windows uh, 12 server, Windows Server 2012. As you can see, I have run the same command, system info. And the important part to check is that system model. It says virtual machine. So it really tells you when it's a virtual machine. So you there is no way that you cannot recognize a virtual machine from a physical computer if you know where to look, of course. Now um, we see the same um, the same things that we see uh, a few minutes ago, and we are going to enable the the virtual the the Hyper V feature. So we go to turn uh, Windows features on and off. We click on it. Uh, sometimes it takes more a few more seconds, but we are looking for Hyper V. When you locate it, there it is. I click on it. I can expand it. This allows uh, allow us will allow us to create and manage virtual machines. So as you can see here, I cannot select them all. So there are some uh, some features that are, that are grayed out, and that's due to the fact that the BIOS from these um, from this computer, which is an Asus, I mean the motherboard, needs to be upgraded. So we are just going to install what we can. And after that, we, uh, the computer needs to be rebooted so it can, uh, and it can finish installing the, the, new, the new features, the new applications. So now I'm just going to click restart. And when we are back, I'm going to continue showing you what to do, what are the next steps. 
So if you want to see a video about how to upgrade a firmware version, I have a video here, it's called BIOS Upgrade. You can find it in the top right of this screen. Here we are back after the reboot. This is the computer I have connected now using uh, RDP. And now I'm going to check, uh, this is another way to see it. I'm going to type system info and kind of give us the same information about the system. You can see here, it, it's giving me the, uh, the motherboard maker, which is an Asus. I'm going to go to properties again, and it's the exact same machine, okay? So now I'm going to come to go back to control, control panel, go to programs and features. I go to uh, turn Windows features on and off. And now I can select all the features because I have already upgraded my upgraded and enable uh, virtualization on my motherboard. Okay, so I'm going to continue installing the missing pieces of the Hyper-V and I'm going to restart it again. When we are back, this is my main computer, the one I use every day. And now I'm going to connect to the computer that we just have rebooted. Here we are. Um, now we are going to the features. As you can see, everything is selected now, everything is installed, and now the feature should be installed. So I'm going to type Hyper-V and it's installed. I can find it. This was not here uh, a few minutes ago. If you can, if you want to try, try on your own computer. You might not. You are not going to find it because you don't have it installed. So I don't need this. We are going to play with this later. But we can create um, virtual machines. We can start a new one and all that. But we are going to save that for for when we really need it and we are going to delve a little deep into it. Now, we have closed that one, we don't need it uh, for the moment. And we're going to connect to the to virtualize machine, the one that's going to virtualize uh, using this other piece of software called Denware Mini Remote Control. Um, now I have, um, I have, I have added uh, this, um, this background to differentiate between the two computers. This is my cheat sheet. You can see this is kind of a diagram of what we're going to do. Physical server, Linux of Windows, yes. Well, Windows, I use uh, disk to VHD, which is a Microsoft tool, piece of software that we need to use to convert the hard drive, well, to, come to, to convert it uh, to a VHD file. So Hyper-V can recognize it and read it. Uh, you can see we have it. I already have it downloaded. I'm going to leave the link in the description below so you can download it as well. It's very, it's less than one megabyte as you can see here. And it's a zip file, then I extract it and you're going to have around seven megabytes. So it's really, really small piece of software, but it's really powerful. Now, as we did in the other computer, in the available PC, I'm going to run the, I open a command prompt and I'm going to run this command, system info. And we can see the host name of the computer to virtualize. It's running Windows uh, 10 Pro. Again, it doesn't matter in this case because this is the machine that is going to be virtualized. So it can be 10 home. Um, the interesting thing to see here is the system manufacturer. It says Dell. So this is telling us that Dell has built this computer. So it has kind of its signature there. The model is Optiplex 7010. As you remember a few minutes ago, when we check the, the new host computer, it, it didn't say anything. It says, I believe manufacturer, but it didn't say Dell or anything else. Other thing that we can see here is the BIOS version, which is A29 that came out this year. So it's a really interesting um, command to see many, a, a lot of information about your system. So this is the software I was, I was talking about, CPU-Z. Again, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. We can see more granular information. For instance, I have Intel, the processor is the Intel Core i7-3770. Um, we have four cores, eight threads. We have the, the socket type, which is LGA. We can see other things like the motherboard, 
again this is a Dell the model is 0773VG of the motherboard we can see many other things like the graphics and RAM and all that but for the moment we don't need to see more of this what I have also created this folder and I have um, also created this notepad document this is this is a test document I have downloaded two random um, photographs on the internet just to show you that they are working obviously and when we migrate when we virtualize this computer and we migrate it to the available PC and we run it it's going to be working as well so we go to extracted files we're going to run disk to VHD as always he's going to ask us do you want to run these sys internals utilities and we're going to click yes um, and here we are so this is what the software is about so disk to VHD version 2.01 and we have these two options use VHDX and use volume shadow copy so what is VHDX so this is the let's say the kind of file that is used for virtual machines VA, VHD it's an older version it supports up to two terabytes which was a lot in the time before Windows 2012 if I remember correctly and VHDX is the newer version which supports up to 64 gigabytes in space in disk in storage uh, what is shadow copy well shadow copy if you have ever used um, the Windows tool that is recover your computer when something is going wrong it takes you back to a previous working version so that's what shadow copy does it creates a snapshot it's not actually a backup but it's kind looks like it's a snapshot of your running operating system now uh, well that's the explanation for this too if you, if you don't select VHDX it's going to save it as VHD in this case it wouldn't make a difference because the hard drive is less than 500 uh, uh, gigabytes and use volume copy if you don't choose either it's going to work anyway you can see here we, we see the volumes we only have one physical hard drive in this computer and if we and it says space required is going to be around 8 gigabytes 8 I mean 18 gigabytes which is fairly small because it doesn't have much only the operating system the updates and the uh, Google Chrome CPU Z and the folders that I have created now VHD file name is going to be save to the desktop in the extracted files folder so as you can see the name is going to be to virtualize extension VHDX now the only thing to do is uh, click create this is going to take a fairly amount of, amount of time and I'm going to stop the video and I'll see you when this when the process is done